What's up guys, Dalen Bailey here and today training my favorite body part and probably your favorite body part too if you follow me, shoulders. And today's workout is one of DLB dailies this week, shoulder day. If you don't know what DLB daily is, well one, you're missing out on a ton of fun and a ton of gains. So DLB Daily is my personal website, it's my membership site where you get all of my training. Every single day of my training I give to you. So if you enjoy this workout and you want more and you wanna get bigger shoulders and bigger backs and bigger chests and bigger legs, follow me on the DLB Daily, dalenbailey.com. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so we already went through a little bit of a warm up. So I always like to like warm up our shoulders. I just grab a band. I do some reverse pulls, um, uh, band pull aparts, but up and over. I don't know, up and overs, <laughs> I guess you call it. Some lateral raises, maybe even some presses. And then I got a little TRX, uh, I got the TRX bands hooked up. I actually saw my friend Jason Poston do this on a cable machine. So you're basically doing a wide row into a Cuban press, you press up and then you just reverse it back down. You're just using your body weight light, uh, at an angle and then you're kind of just going through those little motions just to warm up that rotator cuff so that we can now get into the actual workout. <laughs> So we're starting here at the cable machine because I just love cables. And another thing I really love are face pulls. And I, I've shown you guys, if you've been following me through on my YouTube or if you are a member of the DLB Daily, and you, you already know that I do a lot of face pulls. So today we're doing them a little bit differently. We're not going to lay on the ground. We're actually going to do them standing. Uh, so we're going to start with some rear delts. I think for most people on shoulder day, if you had to say like, what's your weakest part of your delt? So you have your anterior or your front, you have your medial, which is your lateral head, and then you have your posterior in the back. And generally looking from the side, if you have a good chest day and you bench and you do all the, all the things on chest day, you probably wouldn't even really have to train your front delts very much. They're already pronounced. They're probably already overdeveloped. Every single bodybuilder I know has an overdeveloped anterior delt because it just happens. Like anybody that lifts weights has an overdeveloped anterior delt. So I like to focus on the rears usually first. When you have the most energy, when you're the strongest, you give that lagging part the most attention. So we're starting off on the cable machine. We're gonna do a standing face pull. And I have some little tips for that along the way. Um, and then we're gonna go right into a wide row. So our face pull, let's talk about that first. Now, if you've been following me, you've been seeing that I've been doing my face pulls from the ground. I like doing them from the ground. Um, it takes a lot of momentum out. It takes a lot of like this like stabilization out. And it, it actually helps fix your form. So right now we're gonna do them uh, standing, which is so absurd for me. But uh, one thing with a face pull is you're gonna be pulling to your eyebrows. I should call it the eyebrow pull. So I want your hands up above your head. So as you come back, you're gonna be up here and then you're basically replicating a back double by. So if you're bodybuilder, bodybuilding shows are one from behind. That's how you win a show is a really good back double by. And part of having a really good back double by is having really good rear delts. Um, so one big tip here is when you come back for your back double by we're going to internally rotate so that you get a little bit more contraction on that rear delt so here's my regular back double by here's an extra or internally rotated 
if I can't see because it's behind me, but is there a difference in the contraction of the rear head? Oh yeah. Oh, okay, good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I feel I need an audience, Kaya. Did you see that? She's sleeping. Just doing that simple rotation by pulling that thumb backwards, you're gonna get a little better contraction of that rear delt. So that is gonna be your main focus for these first pull uh, face pulls is getting that thumb so it's pointed backwards. Your elbows are actually be kind of be pointed forward and like rotate that wrist in so that your thumbs are facing back. So as you pull, rotate back, thumbs point back. And then you'll get a little bit better of a contraction. We'll then go straight into a wide row, which that what it's kind of like a face pull where this is what most people do as their face pull. But for me, I consider it more of just a wide row. It's a high wide row. So elbows are gonna be nice and wide. This is where you're gonna be pulling right to your face, elbows nice and wide and pull back, pulling those scapulas together, really concentrating on contracting those rear delts. So that will be the second exercise. So we'll go 10 to 12 for each, um, four sets. So here will be the first guy. So take a couple steps back. How you grab the rope is completely up to you. I kind of like face them in because as I rotate, then it's easier for me to get my uh, thumb back behind. So this is how I grab with my thumb closest, thumb and pointer, instead of grabbing like that. For, this is probably how I will be doing the wide row. So we'll start here, thumbs towards the, towards the balls. That's what she said. <laughs> And then you're pulling nice and high and above your head. And then facing those thumbs back, elbows will come forward. So you're basically replicating a back double by, except you're probably a little bit wider. And then we're gonna go into just a wide row. I'm gonna switch my grip from here to here, take your step back, and then keeping those elbows nice and wide, pull back, hold for a second, pull those scapulas together, slow on the eccentric. So one second back, hold, and then a three count in. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Gotcha. So four sets. 10 to 12 each. You should be able to generally not have to change the weight. Um, your face pull this way, you'll tire yourself out, but you will be stronger on your wide row. So you shouldn't have to like drop the weight. So 10 to 12 for each. We're moving on to one of our bigger compound movements of today's workout. I always like to do a heavier shoulder press, whatever it is. So I prefer, we were just having this discussion between barbell and dumbbell. I prefer dumbbells um, on at least a shoulder press. I think when I, like if I'm doing like a lighter barbell, it's good. But when I want to go heavy and like for this, our rep range is like five to six. So I want you going pretty heavy. And when I go heavy on a barbell, because you can't really like, it's more of a fixed position. Like you can actually move the dumbbells a little bit so that you can take tension off your back. I just generally feel like it's a lot of low back and I end up and I'm like overextending my stomach. Like I'm just, I'm out here to try to get it up and around my head and I have like some shoulder impingements that like I can't get out uh, there's a whole lot of stuff so if you like to do a barbell um, I would do a barbell for sure um, we're gonna be doing a dumbbell so what we're doing with this to make it 
slightly a little bit different. We're going super heavy for five to six reps of a strict standing shoulder press. And then when you get, when you start failing, which I want you to fail by six reps. Like I don't want you to be able to do another strict shoulder press. If you can do another one. And then, you know, you just go up and wait a little bit. Then we're going to do what's called like a mechanical drop set. Cause we're not going to be dropping the weight at all. We're just going to be changing our form to get more reps. And we're going to turn that into a push press. Now push press uses your legs. So we're going from not using our legs. You're going to be having a shoulder width stance, knees slightly bent, but I don't want you bouncing the weight up. We'll save that for the mechanical drop set to get a couple extra reps. So we're doing four sets. You might need one or two warm up sets in there. So if you see the workout, I don't count those warm up sets. The only thing I'm counting when I say four sets of five to six, those are your working sets. So sometimes you might, you can't just jump to like 80 pound dumbbells. You need a couple warm up sets in there. So if you need two warm up sets to get to your working weight, that's when you start counting the sets. So we're doing four sets, five to six reps. You keep the same weight and then we're going to add our legs into it and do push presses. So push press the, you come down as the, as the weight comes down, you're going to bend your legs and then you're using your legs to push back up. So yes, this is a huge compound movement where we're using more body parts, but this is just so that we don't need to drop the weight at all. We're going to keep the weight and get a couple more reps. Your goal is to maybe match it. If you did five with the, the forties, keep that weight and try to get five more using your legs. So mechanical drop set. One big thing why I love a good standing shoulder press and it should be in everybody's workout, regardless of doing this, of course it's working your shoulders, but it's working your back, it's working your lats, it's working your core, it's working your glutes, it's working your legs. It's working literally everything because you need everything nice and tight and stable so that you can get good form with that stability. And then obviously when we add in the push press, you're obviously really adding those legs to help drive that weight up. So um, start off light. Uh, one thing that I like to do to save our, our shoulders a little bit, I actually start in a neutral and then I change it. We internally rotate, externally rotate. The only reason I do that is anytime your shoulder is out to the side, I love a good wide. Trust me, I love a good wide, but just to, if you want to save your shoulders a little bit, I think keeping your elbows in front is just, it's going to be just a shoulder save, uh, saver um, instead of being out here where it's a little bit more vulnerable. So if you have any kind of shoulder issues at all, which I don't, knock on wood, I never have any. This is just prolonged, like just safety stuff. But if you have any kind of like problems with your shoulders, I always suggest maybe starting in a neutral grip. It keeps, keeps you locked in and then you can rotate out. So standing good position would be uh, shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent, bring those dumbbells up to your side. Um, as far as your back goes, I don't want you like letting your belly out and like really arching. We don't want this. I want you here. So you're going to suck that core in, keep it tight. And that's, you're going to be your movement instead of being super relaxed. So core's tight, draw those hips forward instead of just letting them come kind of like sag out. Don't let your butt out. Don't arch your back. Cause that's when you'll start feeling it in your lower back. And we want to feel this mostly in our shoulders. So that's a big key tip there for good form. So hips in core tight. Slow on the way down, maybe like a two to three second count. And then once you get your five to six reps, 
Then we're going to add our legs into it. So up. So you should be able to get another couple reps by adding a little bit of that push. So five to six reps, nice, sturdy, stable, no movement at all. Keep that, keep those hips forward, core is engaged, tight, glutes are tight, legs are tight. We're going to strict and then we'll go into a couple push presses. Four sets, five to six, five to six. I feel like I said it a hundred times. <laughs> Switching gears over to hit that medial to lateral head. Uh, we're doing some lateral raises, but a variety of different ways because you can't just ever just do lateral raises by themselves. They have to be done either with something or just different variations of it. So we're going to start with a reverse incline lateral raise. So um, you'll get on an incline bench, set the incline pretty high. Um, and the whole purpose of this is the, the weight's going to be out in front of you and you're going to pretty much not have any kind of momentum. You won't be able to use anything because you're laying on a bench. So the one thing I do like about this is you don't have to use super, super heavy weights and it's super isolating. So we're going to start off with an in high incline lateral raise. So weights are out here and then we're just raising them up to the sides. Normally, if you're standing up, whether you know it or not, you always have just a slight <laughs> little help, helperoo from your lower back or even your legs. But by doing this, you're taking your legs and your lower back pretty much out of the equation and really just focusing on that medial part of your delt. So lateral raise here, you're gonna feel a little bit in your rear delt, a little bit in your front delt, but mostly in our lateral. Um, I like to keep a slight bend in my elbow at all times. Generally for any exercise, they're never like stick straight. They always have a slight bend and then you're just coming out to the side. You'll then keep those weights and then we're going to focus on tempo lateral raises. So tempo, just like we've been doing with uh, the slow eccentric, you're going to go up fast and then a three second down. Now, a couple key tips for here that I never really noticed, but like I always keep my lats flared. So I never have a dumbbell come, like when I come down, it never touch, like my arms never touch my side. And it's not because I'm stopping, it's because my lats are flared out the whole time. And so I flare my lats, so this is generally where my end position is always out here, which then always keeps that tension on your shoulder the whole time. So focus on flaring those lats. So this is unflared. My arms are pretty much down by my side. And then I flare so the arms come up. And then I keep it there that whole, whole entire time. I never undo my lats. So keep your lats nice and tight nice and flared and then you'll be stopping at that point at the bottom which should be pretty much out here so tempo is three second down so up fast three two one up three two one I also don't go above my shoulder anything above it kind of it throws tension somewhere else so I stop right about shoulder width most of the time my elbow will be a little bit higher than my hand just ever so slightly so i lead with my elbows flare my lats lead with my elbows weights are a little bit lower than my elbow and then whether you want to do pinky out or straight i've even seen thumb out i have a slight just ever again so slightly 
my elbows are higher and my pinkies a little bit higher as well. So we'll do tempo laterals and then we're gonna finish off. Now I really prefer doing these. Now I, I generally train by myself, at least bodybuilder style. But if you have a partner, uh, I don't know how, I won't be able to really sh demonstrate this, but I might be able to give the guy behind a ca camera a clip that you can see what manual, like a uh, partner manual resistance. So if you have a partner, your partner can stand in front of you or behind you. And then they're gonna be pushing down on your, like I usually put tension right here on their, on their arms. And you're giving them the most tension at the bottom and then slowly let it off at the top. And then you're gonna reverse it on the way back down. So don't let them just come back down. So it's heavy on the way up and then slow on the way back down. Heavy on the way up, slow on the way back down. So give them that constant tension, really focus on that bottom. If you are by yourself, you can just get a rubber band, maybe get a heavier rubber band than we normally would get. And then you'll just put that underneath you. And then we'll just do constant tension on the rubber band. So we're gonna do more of the top range, whether, whereas if you're doing the partner, we're gonna focus more on like that bottom range. So not letting them move. So then we'll just go to failure, whatever that is. So is that, five reps is that 10 reps is it 20 reps you go until you can't move your arms anymore so up here keep that tension on if you're using a rubber band i usually won't let it drop unless i'm doing like a rest pause like if i get like five really good pulses and i need to rest a rest try to get a couple more and then i go until i can't budge that rubber band if you're doing upwards of like 20 reps, you go get yourself another rubber band, a bigger one. exercises we're going to be on another incline bench we're going to instead of be out here wide with our press we're going to be nice and close in which really focuses on that front delt anytime you go out wide you can kind of feel like you can actually feel it as you bring your shoulder out the weight transfers to your medial head that's not a bad thing but we already kind of did a wider press out here so we're gonna keep it nice and close in the whole entire time, pressing our above your head. And we're going to be sitting, which also takes your lower back out of it, takes your legs out of it, kind of helps you isolate and really focus on that front delt. So keep your elbows right in front of you, press straight up, straight down. Rep range for this is gonna be a six to eight. So you're going as heavy as you possibly can for that six to eight rep range. My incline is not straight up and down. Um, I feel when the bench is like straight up and down, you end up and you start arching a little bit. So I want your back completely flat against the bench. So I like to put the bench a little bit further back because I no longer arch then. So elbows up keeping those elbows nice and tucked, pressing straight up and then down. So this will be your close grip or close neutral grip press. So you won't be as strong in this position as you would probably on in like a wider position. Plus it's a little bit later in the workout. So don't go too, too heavy, but heavy as you can, six to eight reps. We're gonna stay at this station and then we're gonna hit a little more rear delts because why not? You're gonna take that incline down a little bit to about 30 degrees, grab some 
super lightweight, maybe 10, 15, like that's what I'm using. And we're going to be doing dumbbell face pulls. It's so on a incline bench, so incline facing. Now I'm gonna first demonstrate it without weights just cause it's easier to talk without actually holding anything. So arms will be out in front of you. And just like I was talking about in the cable face pull, we're gonna do the same exact thing with our thumbs. So as you pull the weight up, you're gonna externally rotate those shoulders and the thumbs are going to be pointing back behind you. And then you just reverse it back down. So up, elbows wide, basically like you're doing a wide row, but as you're coming up, you're gonna externally rotate, thumbs point back, and then reverse back down. So with a little bit of weight, start in like an overhand position, wide row it up, as you come up, point back. So as long as you end up here with your thumbs at the highest position, you've got it correct. out this incredible shoulder day we are going to be back at the cable two more exercises back to back little compound of a front raise so we're going to be back facing the stack the i'm using the rope rope will be between my legs and you're going to be kind of lean forward just ever so slightly and we're just doing a rope front raise from here i really like this uh versus like something i just love cables it's that that constant tension so anytime you're doing a front raise with dumbbells you lose tension here here we're gonna have tension on the whole time especially if you have a little bit of a lean you're gonna have a little bit of a lean and then you're gonna have tension throughout that full range even when you stop towards the bottom there will still be tension because that weight will be pulling back behind you and for you to not go with it, you gotta be counter balancing that by engaging those front delts. So it's constant tension throughout the full range of motion, which I just absolutely love. So we will be doing 10 to 12 front raises, whether you keep your hands together or keep them apart, that's completely up to you. Obviously apart's gonna be a little bit harder. So if you wanna start apart, how I mean that, I guess I could demonstrate that. Is not letting the ropes touch. So almost like you're doing like a, just widening, like make them go wider at the top. When you're here, it makes it a little bit easier. So start wide and then as you start to fatigue, to get a couple more reps, just bring it together, it makes it just a little bit easier and then you can keep going. So try to go as heavy as you can, having them separate and then to get all 10 to 12, if you need to bring them together, bring them together. You'll then up the weight just a hair. We're gonna turn around. I'm trying to figure out what to call this. I'm, I'm more on board for a high pull. So it's in between a high pull and an upright row. So an upright row would generally be pulling straight up but because we're at a cable and we're at the rope you need to be backed away a little bit so we're going to be actually pulling at an angle which i kind of like even more because it gets your traps into it and i don't really do i don't really do shrugs or anything like that i do that with i get all my trap workout on back day through like upright rows and lateral raises and just getting that little squeeze, but not actually ever doing a shrug. So this will partake in our traps, getting a little bit more involved here. So keeping the weight at our pulley at the bottom, 
so upright row, we would be here, but because we are on a rope, we need to get a little bit more tension. And I kind of like pulling at this angle because it's going to get your traps a little bit more involved. We're getting our rear delts, but it's medial head, your rear delts, and your traps. Just getting that nice angle. So coming down and then pulling up as high as you can, elbows higher than your hands, and then back down. Let's concentrate on the eccentric on this one. So up fast, three, two, one, down slow. Hold for a second, three, two, one. You just got four sets, four sets, and then we're done. And then you, and then I will be laying right there. I can't, I can't. Workout just needs to be done. <laughs> that was just a sample of this week's shoulder day on DLB daily so if you enjoyed today's workout and you want more and you want me to just give you a workout every single day of the week 365 days a year you don't have to think you just walk into the gym and there's your plan well come on over to DLB daily my site dalen by the <laughs> dalenbailey.com $7 a month, but right now we are doing the first seven days for free. No questions asked. You try it out for free. If you don't like it, because it's probably too hard, that's got to be the only reason. I can't think of any other reason. So if it's too hard for you and you have to leave, I won't ask you why. You just toodaloo, but come out, try it out for free. First seven days for free, $7 a month. Come train with me. I'll train you every single day. SalemBailey.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on my site. <laughs>